Hi, this is Carl B. And today I'm going to be reviewing the Solstice Flare One Person Inflatable Kayak. I will be going over a brief overview of the Solstice, uh, why I decided to purchase it, and I will be comparing it a little bit to my Advanced Elements Firefly, which isn't quite in the same category, but uh, you know, just to compare construction and things like that to a uh, better known brand. Um, and then I'll be going over the pros and cons of the boat. Okay, so the reason I decided to do a review of this boat is that mainly because there's no real videos about this boat on YouTube. There's one video where they basically have a robotic voice reading what sound just like, you know, company marketing talking points. And there's a couple other possible videos. Um, I think the company has one or two videos that just shows people paddling around in the boat, but doesn't give any details. And, you know, there may be a few um, videos on, you know, best inflatable kayaks of 2021 or 2020 that, that might mention it. But there's no real good video on this boat. So... Anyway, it's a brief overview. Uh, Solstice Flare 1. I bought it on Amazon. I don't know where else you can purchase it. I think Walmart. Um, this company, I don't know much about it. It seems to be not real well known, but apparently they make uh, rafts, like whitewater rafts, because several people on on, on uh, Amazon or Google, I think, uh, commented about it, um, talking about the, the whitewater rafts that they had um and the construction of those okay so overview solstice flare it is a one person inflatable kayak obviously they say it's three layer nylon construction so i can't really tell it doesn't seem to be thick enough like the firefly uh particularly there you can obviously see that the outer shell is completely separate from the inner um the the, the bladders as they call them, the uh, vinyl inside, which is similar, kind of similar to a cheaper rubber raft, though I think it's a little bit thicker. Anyways, you can tell with my advanced elements there that the outer shell is completely separate and it's very thick, it's very strong. It gives you a lot of confidence about the boat being able to withstand punctures and, and running into rocks and branches and shells and whatnot. So the solstice, um, well, let me give you the information they'll go into the construction. But anyways, it's nylon, uh, they say it's three layer fabric. It's about nine and a half feet long and uh, around 20 pounds. I've seen different numbers on it. I, I believe it's uh, 35 inches wide and it has a drop stitch floor. And as you can see there, it's got valves. Uh, sorry, it's a little dirty, but it's got valves for um, so that uh, you can let water go out of the boat when you're paddling. So this is designed to be a white water or still water uh, kayak. As you can see, the front and the rear are partially covered, which is nice. And that way you get a little bit of water protection. But if it's going to be really wavy or windy, you might want to have those uh, ports open, which is why they have those included there. It has a foam seat with straps, which don't work real well, but that's been covered. Uh, if you read the reviews online, you'll see that. Um, but yeah, that's about a nine and a half feet, 35 inches wide. Uh, around 20, I think I've seen weights ranging from 20 to 24 pounds. It feels quite light when it's inflated. Um, inflatable kayak. Price range, it was, I believe, $559 on Amazon with free shipping, if I'm not mistaken. Now, as far as I'm aware, it is the only boat with a drop stitch floor in that category, and we'll go over that later. Okay, so now you can see my Advanced Elements Firefly. It's, it's a different kind of kayak. Like I said, it has the outer shell, which is completely, obviously separate from the inner. It does not have a drop stitch floor. It has your traditional i beam floor. Um, it's shorter, about a foot and a half at least, and um, has slightly different valves, which we'll go over later. And this boat, of course, it's mostly covered, um, so it's tighter to get in and out of it. Not as good for fishing. Uh, I love this boat. This is my first quality inflatable that I bought. Uh, inflatable kayak and it's really well made 
and for the for you know for West Design for and for the price I got it at a floor model it was under two hundred dollars well under two hundred uh, for that price range I think it was a great deal and it works fine but it's a little too small for me and it's not great for fishing because you know you don't really have much room to cast and it's not comfortable to be in for long periods of time because it's so tight and my feet um, don't really fit in the end of the boat with shoes on and I have to contour myself a little bit to you know keep them in there but it's a great little boat you know my kids use it now a little bit they're autistic so it, they don't like to uh, be out in the water for very long but um, last time we took it out I got one of my boys paddling around for about half an hour so it's perfect for you know for kids and for uh, women or short men um, I'm five foot eight and about 188 pounds and for me without shoes it it's fine it's snug but it's it's comfortable but not for you know not for hours and hours and hours fishing which I've done in it many times and cut a lot of fish but it's it's not really designed for that or suitable for that so the solstice as you can see there is it's definitely longer it's a more open design much easier to get in and out of um, especially with that drop stitch floor which uh, we'll be going over but that basically is a um, high pressure stiff floor design so what that does not only does it make the boat feel very stable and uh it makes it feel more like a hard shell kayak but it also makes it easier to get in and out of because you can push most of the kayak out into the water and then you can step in near the front and then step back to your seat and when you sit down you're over hopefully over deep enough water that um you're not you know stuck on the on on the gravel or whatever like with the uh with the Firefly, uh, since that boat's smaller, it does not have a stiff the stiff floor, and it has a small entryway. I have to have it real close to the shore to get in, and then a lot of times it's hard to I have to kind of lift myself and push out um, to get going. Okay, so what else? So we discussed the overview. Um, so now let's go into the pros and cons. So pros of this boat. Oh, I'm sorry. First, uh, why I bought it. The reason why I bought this Solstice kayak is because I wanted, I was looking for certain features in a boat because as I mentioned, the Advanced Elements kayak there, it's not really suitable for fishing, especially for someone my size. So I wanted a boat that was a little bit bigger, but still mobile and, you know, very agile on the water. And I wanted to get a drop stitch floor if I could. I was hoping to put in one of those aluminum fishing kayak seats at some point. Um, but I think this boat is too narrow for those to fit, but it's fairly comfortable. I mean, after a while, um, this seat is thicker than the other one, but since the floor is stiffer, you know, you still get a little sore, but overall I find it better, uh, for long usage, especially because you just don't feel cramped in there and that psychological element and it's physical, um, not having that feeling kind of oppressing you for hours it it makes you feel more comfortable and um obviously like i mentioned when you want to get out and take a break like a bathroom break or lunch break or whatever it's much easier in this boat to get out and then back in um so that's one thing that's great about it but i was looking for a boat that was uh a little bit bigger more open and had the drop stitch floor if possible and uh would be suitable for fishing now this is obviously not a, it's not designed to be a fishing kayak, but I find it works pretty well. Obviously it doesn't have any rod holders or anything like that built in, um, but I'm able to troll with it just fine and it's, it's agile and uh, I'm able to get around. So that's why I purchased it uh, mainly for fishing. That's why I go out boating. It's pretty rare that I'll go paddling without fishing, uh, except for with my kids. Okay, so pros and cons. Like I said, pros of this boat, uh, to me, is the size. I didn't want something bigger than, you know, I was looking for something a bit bigger than that Firefly kayak there from Advanced Elements. I believe it's registered as uh, 7 foot 10. It's really quite short for a boat. Um, the Solstice is, I think, right at 9.5. So it's almost 2 feet longer than uh, the other boat. Or it's like a, a foot and, and eight inches longer. And it really feels like it. It's roomy for someone who's not really tall. But at the same time, 
it's still small enough to be easy to transport and easy to move around on the water, which is especially important for fishing if you're in ponds or whatnot and you're going between reeds and branches and stuff like that. It, you don't want a huge boat, at least I don't. Um, other pros, like I mentioned, the front and rear are covered. Um, it is pretty sturdily constructed, though I don't think it's as impervious as the advanced element is to be damaged, but so far I haven't had any issues. Um, it is high pressure. The floor, I think it said it takes up to 8 PSI, which sounds pretty high to me. The side bladders, uh, two and a half. Uh, I haven't been pumping them that high just because I'm worried about the heat and also because the seams are glued on this boat, which is something else we'll discuss. But uh, I think I've been pumping them to about mm, maybe a pound and a half, possibly two on the PSI. And um, it's working just fine with that. Paddles really well. Um, okay, so the pros, like I said, the size and weight weighs around 20 or so pounds. Um, so it's not too hard to carry other than the wind. You know, if, if you're carrying it inflated on your shoulder and the wind comes up, yeah, that's an issue. But as far as weight, it's not hard to carry. It doesn't take up a huge amount of space in your trunk. It takes up a bit more than the advanced elements there. But, um, you know, I have a pretty small car, Mazda 3, and it fits fine in my trunk. So, you know, it doesn't take up a huge amount of room. It's it's quality. I'm not sure if it's at the high level of quality that uh, the Advanced Elements and other well-known brands of inflatables are at. But it seems good quality to me, especially like the front and rear have thick rubber or plastic. Uh, you can see right there a little bit, the black tip. It's a very thick um, like bumper that's on the bow and the stern to protect you from banging into the you know, the shore or cliffs or whatever. It's got D-rings. It's got, the fabric is fairly thick. Um, as I mentioned before, I, I read somewhere on a website, I believe that uh, the company was saying it's a three-ply nylon material. Now, I'm thinking that it's three thin layers kind of glued together. I don't think it's actual um, inner bladder covered by a separate, outer layer like the advanced elements and other boats are but the, i can't really tell um because there's no way to see inside there's no zippers so other advanced elements um not mine but others have as you can see on my boat um the inner part of the uh the bladders are not covered but on other advanced elements boats and other brands they are completely encased so there's actually three layers of material there's the inner bladder then those are covered, and then there's the outer cover over everything. So when this one says three layers, it doesn't look to me or feel or feel heavy enough to be that kind of three-layer construction. Um, I'm thinking it's just three thin layers of nylon. They're kind of glued together. So actually only one layer of material. That's what it seems like to me. Now, of course, you've got the drop stitch floor sitting on top of the nylon. So the floor is two layers. So, I mean, it would be possible that you could puncture... Um, the bottom of the boat and not puncture the actual drop stitch inflatable part. So I'm not highly worried about that. What I do worry about is, is that it is uh, apparently put together with glue instead of uh, electronic welding like the advanced elements is. So as you can see there on the boat, you see there's the gray sections and the red sections. And then you can see a big seam running down the edge. Well, that is where, okay, we're going to zoom in. Um, you can see that big seam. And so apparently that's where there's glue inside there that holds those apart. And uh, so that may not be as stiff. Now you saw me just pushing on the floor there. So that is the drop stitch floor. Um, one of the reasons I bought this boat, drop stitch is a fairly new technology. It's been around for a few years, but a lot of people aren't familiar with it. Basically, you can see all those uh, like dimples, or you can see it's kind of kind of got like a wishbone pattern, but uh, you may not be able to tell it, but there's um, a bunch of dimples. And what those are, there's fabric inside there that goes um, between the upper and bottom layer, kind of like strings. And that way, there's thousands of those, so you can blow it up to really high pressure and it doesn't explode. So that gives you a lot of uh, rigidity, which, you know, keeps the boat uh, stiff, almost like you're in a plastic kayak. 
as you can see the seat uh, and i apologize my boat is kind of dirty i haven't washed it i've been doing a lot of fishing and it needs to be thoroughly clean but the seat is um, nylon with a foam i'd say the foam is about an inch thick on the bottom or something like that um so it gives you some cushioning um i would like to get a thicker seat at some point for being on the water for hours and hours but uh, it works pretty well um it's got those d-rings there for tying things down as you can see right there it's got the uh the bungees on the front um for a jacket or whatnot and then you can see the valves there it has uh they're called i think hulky roberts valves which they work a little differently than the advanced elements and um I prefer the advanced elements valves are easier to use in my opinion, but these and, and less confusing, but these ones I think are better for higher pressure and that's why they use them and they're pretty common on uh, expensive boats. Okay, what are the pros? I believe those are all the pros. Oh, wait, it, it's rated for holding I think 300 pounds, um, which is pretty good. You know, I, I'm not putting nearly that much in the boat, so it has no problem holding me in my gear. Uh, oh, yeah, another pro is you can see there's a lot of space behind the seat, so I can put my backpack there, which is really nice. Uh, when I'm fishing from the other boat, if I've got a day pack with my lunch and water and maybe a jacket and whatnot, I have to put that on top of my legs, and then I have to put my tackle bag on top of the boat uh, and hope it doesn't fall off. Um this boat has much more room and it's just more comfortable for me to fish in okay so as far as cons oh and here we go uh so i am stepping on the drop stitch floor to show you that it is stiff and it is strong so if you can stand on, on the land obviously in the water it's going to hold you nice and securely uh some cheap boats you know i had at one point i had a seviler one of those ubiquitous yellow seviler uh, inflatable kayaks with the big fat yellow inflatable seats that lose air after about two minutes and that thing always felt like you're sinking into a giant uh, beanbag chair it's very inferior and nowhere near as usable as these modern boats now this one the my advanced elements you can see it has the i-beam floor it does not have drop stitch but because it's so small and because it has the outer hull um it doesn't sink it doesn't feel like you're sinking in nearly as much as it does in the older style boats um but as i mentioned my feet wearing shoes my feet are too long to stand up vertically in the bottom of the boat and there's not enough room to put them both side by side so you know it's not the most comfortable but for someone smaller it's a great boat i would highly recommend it um it's much lower price point too okay so we went over pros went over cons a little bit basically the cons on this boat the number one that i can think of is the glued seams um according to google and i didn't read this until after i got the boat and found out that it had glued seams uh glued seams are not as reliable and don't last as long as welded seams and apparently in hot and humid climates which i am in south central texas so it's hot and humid much of the year uh the glue deteriorates over time so it's not the best if you live someplace like especially Florida or Georgia or someplace like that. And even here in Texas, although I probably only take it a few more times out on the water like early in the morning because it's April now and uh, it was 90 degrees today. So it's going to be pretty much hot from here on out. So I'm not going to take it outside too much more. Um, you know, I don't want to chance it. Um, but anyways, that's the number one con for this boat. It's just that it's got that that construction another con is that um there's really hardly any information on it and i don't know what they have as far as like warranty and stuff like that it's not a well-known company i don't know if they have customer service is easy to reach you know a company like advanced elements that made that yellow boat there um you know they're a quality company if you have a problem uh, serious problem with the boat they will get back in contact with you they'll work with you to find a solution um you know they have a real customer service department i have no idea with this solstice boat if something goes wrong with it i could just be stuck with it so like i said um for this price point i think it's good quality but i just worry a lot about those glued seams 
other than that, there aren't really any cons other than the um, one small thing is because this boat is designed for white water and still water. Uh, the front, the bow and the stern are raised up pretty high, which is fine, except that it seems to make it kind of uh, floaty for a few. When, when, whenever I start to paddle, I have to paddle like four or five strokes before the boat starts moving. And once it gets going, it works well. I can go pretty fast. It doesn't take a huge amount of effort. Um, I don't have a problem paddling in a straight line at all. So it works great. It's just, it feels like it's a little slow to get going, but uh, that's not a serious problem for me. And those valves, like I said, these Hulky Roberts valves, um, you can see there, they're, they're tricky to learn how to use. That's the other negative of this boat, aside from the skeg, which I will be talking about in a second. Um, now that I have figured out how to use them, they work pretty well, but the instructions that came with the boat were minimal and even instructions on Google aren't that great. And with the pump, um, I was having problems taking the pump out and like the, the uh, pump would come apart where the adapter for those valves connects. Uh, I was twisting it the wrong way or whatever, and it would come, the, the, the hose would come off and then all the air would rush out. It was pretty frustrating. So if you're going to get one of these, uh, and a lot of boats use these valves, by the way, and even things like, like paddle boards, uh, some may use them. So uh, just something to be aware of. The valves are tricky, and they do require a special adapter. Uh, I don't believe you have to use, oh, and, and here you can see some of that glued seam um, up close that I was mentioning earlier. And then you'll be able to see in a second where I show on the other boat, um, it's a different kind of seam where they call it welded. So I guess it's electronically like, kind of melted together which is apparently stronger and more reliable. And you can see once again that this boat has a very pronounced outer hull, which is quite strong. Okay, there you go. You can see the seam uh, where two pieces of rubber are connected to make the tube. And that connection there is welded together. So it's kind of melted together and that's supposed to be much better and more durable. Okay, so like I was saying, the cons on the Solstice, aside from it's a little slow to start paddling, uh, the valves can be tricky, it has glued seams. Uh, the, two more issues, one is that, like I said, there's not much information and I have no idea what kind of support the company has, so that's an issue. The other one is the skeg. Now, mine seem to be that the cutouts, um, it kind of slides or swings into place and it's got some cutouts where um, one part of it kind of hooks over a, a little section on the bottom of the boat and then the other end of it hooks over another part. And uh, on mine, it would the, the part where it's drilled out or formed um, wasn't long enough. So you couldn't attach both ends at the same time. And then it's got a little plastic part that goes through a hole to, you know, um, laterally to hold it in place. But because I didn't have it attached correctly, I think it fell out and I lost it. Um, I wasn't able to get it securely attached before I put that thing in there. So it was really only hooked in on one end. And then I put the, the um, little cross piece through the hole. It seemed to have fallen out and disappeared. So that's an issue with this boat. The skeg, at least on mine, the skeg did not work well. Now, you don't really have to have it, but it definitely helps uh, with the wind, and especially when fishing. Sometimes with this boat, I have issues where I start paddling, and then I go to cast my my, uh, my line back and get the rod secured and everything. And by the time I go to start paddling again, the boat may have turned around like 90 degrees or something. Um and then by the time I get the boats turned around and going again in the right direction, my lure may have sunk to the bottom and got stuck on a rock or something. So it's kind of a pain. Anyways, overall, I think it's a good boat. It just has issues you really need to be aware of and do some research before you buy it. I think for $550, it's a good deal. And if it lasts, I'll be happy.